So I'm finally sitting down to to plant more seeds. I'm actually going to be planting um, some pepper, okra, and what's it on? Oh, the Baladi eggplant. Honestly, I just want to make this an enjoyable experience. I think sometimes um, we can make things more painful than it needs to, to be, and we can make it a task. And this is something I don't want to make a task. It's already a lot already <laughs> as far as like the amount of seeds we're going to plant and the different things that I'm doing to the pots. So I'm taking my time to like separate when I choose to do these things. And I feel so relaxed and I want to keep this going just like this. I don't want to record in the other area where I have to stand up and have the lights and do all this stuff. No, I just want to sit down, enjoy the experience of planting some seeds and yeah, go from there. I don't think this is a process that we should make pain for or make like a task. If you set like a little task to do, to do just a little something every day, like a 1%, I think by the time you're done with this task, you actually have time to like breathe, but it won't feel like a chore. And that's the thing that I've realized with the garden is like, okay, what can I take and do one thing a day? to do something for the garden. And I got this idea from this lady that I was watching. I don't remember her channel. Her goal was to plant one seed every day for a hundred days. And I was like, that's a dope idea. You just take one packet and try to grow those seeds or plant those seeds once every day. It won't feel like, oh, I'm out there forever. I'm having to plant this, I'm having to plant that. Yes, I'm sure you're going to have to do some planning as far as where you're going to put them. But outside of that, like, you could just take one day to do planning. Okay, where are my taller plants? They're going to go back here. Where are the shorter plants? They're going to go in front of that, you know. And what's the shortest of the shortest, you know. Or what's the viney plants? They're going to go here. Or where's the plants that love more water? Okay, what part of my yard possibly, you know, has an area where water just sits more and I have something like that in our in our property I'm like okay so what are the plants that like the water that's what I want to go plant over there I'm definitely not going to plant no potatoes over there <laughs> no root plants are going to go live over there it's just no um and then what part of the property has a lot of sunlight you know beaming down on it and what has shaded areas so what plant like more shade and what plant likes more sun those are where I need to move in that area. So that's just kind of like what my mindset has been. Um, as of right now, I'm just planting the seeds. I'm going to come back and start figuring exactly where I want to put them. I'm already thinking about the trellis ideas. So they can have their place to grow up instead of growing down on the ground and being in the way. So what I'm trying to say is find the 1%. Find the one thing that you can do each day in the garden. That won't make it feel like a chore, but it'll add up to the big thing. It will add up to the, the larger thing. Because if you can do, you can be trusted to do the small things well, you'll be trusted to, to do the big things even better. Start small, right? All right. So what I learned from last year after, you know, when, you know, spontaneously deciding, hey, I'm going to plant some peppers and tomatoes around June, July, <laughs> uh, I realized they needed time. And then it changed my perspective. I was like, oh, because I didn't see myself attempting to grow anything. And um, ooh. yeah, I did not see myself attempting to grow anything. But the more and more I just kept doing things in the greenhouse, cleaning it up, uh, removing certain things out of the bed. Um, then looking at my seed collection, I was like, you know what? grow something and then I'm just thinking uh I don't know if I'm gonna have time to be working and it went from that from me just spending way more time in the garden and I was like you know what let me see if I can germinate something let me see if I can do this and started looking for auto alternatives to try to grow indoors and here we are funny enough two years ago over two years ago I attempted to grow plants indoors and the fungus gnats ended up taking over all of the plants that had germinated. 
And I didn't know what they were. And I, I, I definitely learned about it. <laughs> I learned about it. It hurt really bad. Because, uh, you know, I, I was, well, you may not know. But I was really excited. I was excited at the fact that, oh, man, I planted these seeds and they're all germinating. And I was like, I could really do this. And they took over. They got the plants good. I, I mean, I didn't realize what they were. I was like, oh, you know, it's nature, it's bugs, you know, in the soil. Hey, that, you know, that happens or whatever. But then when I noticed that my plants weren't growing... I was like, let me look up what these plant these things are, cause they keep they're they're getting more and more. And when I looked up what they were, I was like, oh no, they eat at the roots of the plants. Oh my no, that's why they're not growing. And oh my gosh, I I I did become discouraged, and I tried everything in the naturally possible to try to get rid of them, and it just did not work. It was it was too late, and I had to scrap everything. So. Now, you could sit there and accept the things that life throws you. Because, you know, I honestly, I did not expect to even want to be growing anything. I, I didn't. It just, I kept having this desire. And the word says that God will place the desires. He will, um, place, he will give us the desires of our heart. And a lot of times we don't realize that our heart yearns for certain things. The things we think we want to do is... Those are just our plans. But the things that we naturally have the desire in our heart to do, and we have no idea where they're coming from, or well, hopefully they're not coming from the devil, but, um, or the enemy, because there's more than one. Thank you, Lord. It's like, okay, I don't know where this is going, but you know what? I don't trust you. And then it just kept going. I saw this thing on Amazon. And I was like, hmm, these peep pellets. I was like, you know what? look and see because all I've been doing is trying to plant stuff in the greenhouse I hadn't been trying to plant anything indoors I ain't even like literally I thought did not even cross my mind <laughs> and um lo and behold I bought these and then I ended up watching this guy's video and he was showing images and video clips of how um, he was working on the garden and he was pulling these these out of the garden on plants that were fully developed and it had literally like kept the roots trapped. So that's why I'm removing these in case, you know, anybody's wondering. And I'm like, you know what? Yes, I'm gonna use it. Yes, I thank the Lord for showing me that because I wasn't even looking for it. And yeah, I don't mind doing the extra work. This is actually, like I said, it feels, it feels really therapeutic to just sit here and, and do this part. And I, I'm gonna be planting these seeds that I bought like over three years ago, I think it was about three years ago, they're called Ballady Eggplant. And I th think they're like some kind of um, eggplant from the Middle East. They're actually supposed to be really, really good. And they're just been sitting in my collection. And I've been having this mindset of want to buy seeds, buy seeds, buy seeds. And it's like, okay, that's great and all. But like, when are you going to make time to actually plant what you already got? So that's what I'm doing today. I am making time to plant what I already got. And the seeds are actually mixed in here. I was soaking some arugula seeds as well. Probably shouldn't have soaked them this long, but they weren't germinating. Either they weren't germinating or something was eating them. <laughs> okay, let's get this water out. So yeah, I'm like, you know, why spend all this time saving all these seeds? Why not start learning how to grow this stuff now? This is the perfect time to start learning how to grow this stuff. It's not, you don't need to be waiting to learn how to grow these things when there's turmoil and, you know, stuff hitting the fan. And then you over here trying to, trying to learn how to grow stuff. No, no, sir. All right, I'm going to put two per cell because just in case it doesn't, you know, well, I won't say just in case, but let's just make sure. <laughs> All right. But on the other ones, I am not doing two per cell. Now, one of the things I noticed about these peat pellets, if you're going to take them out of this form, you definitely want to make sure that they're completely wet. I do want to say that. So in case anybody wants to do that, you don't have to do what I'm doing. You know, you can totally do what works for you. But um, definitely make sure the these are, are wet. And if they're not wet enough, you know, just pour more liquid on it or sit it in more liquid. And then I learned something new this year. I learned something new about um, 
this thing called soil blocking. I don't know, I'm totally, totally new to all of this. Funny enough, when I found out I had to take these off, I was like, oh, well, I guess I'll be doing some soil blocking. Let's see how that turns out with these. It's supposed to help with um, helping the plant to develop even more. You know what? These seeds look very, very promising, if I should say so myself. Yeah, I love eggplant. I love making like little hamburgers with them and all that stuff, using them. Oh, I love cooking with them. Them and some onions. And I'm going to do a whole tray dedicated to onions. Got, got to. Um, I have some seeds that I'm just going to grow them. Short day, long day, whatever. I'm just going to grow them because you know what? I bought them not knowing any better and we're going to see what happens. And I'm just going to let these bad boys grow. So oh, let me at least mark where I stopped. That's what I've been doing. Marking where I stopped. I believe I stopped here. All right. And then I'll just come back and mark them properly. And then I want, oh, oh gosh, am I gonna have any seeds? But you know what? I do have this tray right here that I'm gonna be using, and I'm gonna plant these in a bunch of different locations. Um, instead of planting them all in the same place, like actually plant them in different locations, mix them up with different plants. Um, at least that's my thought process for this. This was one of my thought process too. I'm not gonna know until I actually start doing it, but whatever plant that I find to be successful, I wanna stick to those seeds. I don't want to just be having like a thousand varieties of the same thing. No, I'm cool. Like if I can grow these one eggplants and they are delish and they are awesome and they grow well, or there's like maybe another kind that grows quicker, it might not be the same type, but you know, it might be a smaller, like a little finger or something like that. I think that's what they're called. And grow a little finger because maybe they might produce sooner. And then these might take way longer to produce. Yes, I would do that my little sweet peppers over here these remind me of bell peppers except they're smaller so that means what i can get those sooner right that's my thought process if i can get those to harvest sooner then i can wait wait on the bell peppers i hope that's this is like helping somebody to think a little bit differently is that okay i can have the one plant that i want to grow but it's like okay what's that other one that's a variety that would grow way sooner so I can have something to eat on while I wait on this other one. I would totally do that. So something that you can get that's kind of can like fill that void until the other one fully develops. To these other guys, these are called um, Gold Rush Banana Peppers. And these are from Haas, H-O-S-S. -S. So I'm gonna put it right here. All right, and so these are banana peppers. I'm like, Shh. Listen, you can never have enough peppers, okay? Peppers, tomatoes, onions. And then the fillers would be like the eggplant, uh, the cabbage, uh, the lettuce, the cucumbers, um, things like that. Spinach. Ooh, spinach. Oh, okay, anyway, moving on. Now these are the red, they're the burgundy okra. Like I said, I wanted them to expand, and they did. They did. I'm going to put them in the incubator, so they should be fine. But I'm going to put them in something bigger. I'm not going to put them in these. That's the one thing I learned from first time. I was like, ah, oh, that was not smart. So, because it only makes sense. And I have a lot of them, so. Because I want to make sure I'm growing enough okra. I mean, are you kidding me? I'm planning on dedicating rows to these guys, so. Or at least putting them a little further back. All right, definitely want to put these. Think about the size of the the seed, right? So whatever the size of the seed is, you definitely want to. To me, I want it to get down in the ground and then another size of the seed at least. All right, and then just loosely cover it. Do not make these plants struggle to come up. Yeah. So once these develop a little bit more, then I'm going to transfer them into their own pots. That's the thought process. So that way I'm not wasting, having like a whole bunch of trays and then, you know, these don't develop. No, I, I have limited space. So I'm trying to work with the space that I already have. What are they called? Oh, this seed is really, really small. I'm not planting that. And then the rest of the pepper that's in here is a bell pepper and it's called Aloha Holland. I had bought this from, it was from a farmer's market. Listen, you want to buy seeds, just go to the farmer's market. Grab a couple of the little fruit, whatever it is, the peppers, whatever. 
put them in a little bag. Just buy like one, buy one tomato that looks unique. Buy one pepper. There's a whole bunch of seeds in there or two peppers just to make sure the seeds are good on the inside. Yeah, and then just save the seeds. That's what I did. Yeah, what do y'all do when when you're trying to test out something and you don't want to spend all that money? Suppose I don't enjoy it. So testing it always came from buying store-bought stuff. Organization is key when you're planting. Um, I used to be like, oh yeah, I remember the seeds. Mm -mm, not anymore. I ain't doing that foolishness. Listen, just go ahead and buy you a Sharpie. They sell Sharpies for $1.25 at the dollar store, okay? There's no reason why we should not be having, and I'm only growing one kind of okra, so I'm cool with that. But they sell the four inch ones on Amazon. Yeah, but this is one of my favorite methods of when it comes to growing seeds is just um, soaking it in water. Like soaking them in water the night before or depending on the seed. Like I, I want to see them expand. And once they expand, then yeah. But when it comes to like lettuce seeds and stuff like that, those are a little bit more, you know, temperamental or if it was like, uh, what's the other one? Like a lot of flower seeds. Marigolds. Yeah, I wouldn't soak. I don't know if I would soak those. Yeah, i just rather just throw those out. I'm not just going to be just growing just these alone. Yeah, I'm actually going to be dedicating a lot of trays to flowers. You got to have flowers to attract the right bugs into the garden. That's one of the things that I've been learning. You want to have the flowers next to your plants. I just planted these. These are supposed to be indeterminate um, tomatoes. Like I said, I, I definitely want to figure out one that I want to grow. I don't want to grow aroma and then grow this and then grow the San Marzano or whatever it's called. I want to find one taste that I really like. So I'm growing three different ones and I'll see which one that I like more. These are Plobano peppers from, like I said, about two years ago. So, no, actually these are from 2020. Yeah, like I said, I've been saving seeds for a while. I know. You'll be like, why don't you just grow fresh ones? Uh, yes, I could. Very well. I, I definitely could, but why not attempt to grow? That's, that's what my mindset is right now. It's like, why not attempt to grow what I've already started? Yeah, I'm not going to grow these. See that? It's like dark on the inside. No, we're just going to toss those. What else looks dark on the inside? There's another one. Yep, looks hollow. But some of these actually do feel swollen. So that is actually good news. Like this one, it's nice and fat. All right, so I'm gonna definitely plant that one. I'm gonna plant the ones that look nice and light colored, healthy looking. I love me some Bobano peppers, boy. Can y'all tell I like peppers? <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna just make a mixed tray. Why not? Would I do something like that? Yeah, because when it's out there growing and I start picking anything I'm going to care? No. Not at all. And I already know what it is because I have these guys labeled. Oh, this guy. I grew this seed. I don't know what pepper this is. But when I tell you this thing is prolific, it, it set a whole bunch of fruit. I was like, oh my gosh. I was so it was so good, especially when it got ripe. Ooh, that flavor was on point. So it wasn't just hot, but it also had flavor. I wish I could tell you what it was. Yeah, that's what happens when uh, you grow seeds and you don't label them. So that's why I'm doing something different this year <laughs> and labeling it. But right now its name is Prolific Pepper. <laughs> and I'm just going to make another one of these and plant it and be right back. Anyway, one entire point is let's get started. Don't wait. Don't wait till you think you need to learn how to do this and then you do. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like I said, I hope that this encourages somebody out there. And may the peace of the Lord be with you.